We start in Iran, where in the last few hours, the reformist candidate Masoud Pazashkian has been elected the country's new president, beating his hardline conservative rival Saeed Jalili. The vote was declared in Mr. Pazashkian's favor after he secured 53.3% of more than 30 million votes counted. Mr. Jalili polled 44.3%. The runoff came after no candidate secured a majority in the first round of the election on the 28th of June, which saw a historically low voter turnout of 40%. The election was called after Iran's previous president, Ibrahimi Raisi, was killed in a helicopter crash in May, in which seven others died. Kazra Naji from BBC Persian told me how significant this result is for Iran. The Islamic establishment in Iran and Iran's supreme leader, uh, they didn't want this to happen. I think their plan was that uh, they were hoping that another Islamic hardliner will take the reign of, of the presidency so that all the levers of power are in the hands of the hardliners who are uh, loyalists to Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. But uh, Mr. Pezeshkian has upset their plans. And um, in the last few hours uh, before the final results were um, uh, declared, uh, Mr. Pazishkian's supporters were already on the streets of Tehran and other big cities in Iran celebrating uh, that they have their candidate, a relatively moderate candidate that beat a very hardline Islamist. And you say that his victory would upset the hardline leaders within Iran. Just tell us a bit more about uh, Mr. Pazeshkian and what do you think ultimately made him successful? Uh, Mr. Pazeshkian is a heart surgeon, but um, in the recent years he's been a member of parliament. Uh, he is, um, uh, as I say, a relative a moderate conservative Islamist uh, and he was the only uh, one of uh, six candidates uh, to, to, who were allowed to run in these elections and the only moderate candidate. The rest of them were hardliners and that was the key because uh, then a lot of people thought okay uh, we've got all these hardliners and then we have somebody who's relatively moderate so a lot of people um, voted for him so that others won't get elected. And in fact, it happened, and in the runoff, it happened again with Mr. Jalili, uh, his rival, and a lot of people um, voted tactically so that um, the hardliners wouldn't get back into power. And uh, what do you think his victory means for Iran's policies? I want to take this in two steps. First of all, domestic policies. We've seen protests in Iran, but also internationally, it's a key player in the Middle East. And there's also a lot of Western interest in terms of what happens in Iran. Uh, let's not forget that only 50 percent of uh, those eligible to vote voted yesterday in the runoff. So it means half the people who were eligible to vote didn't vote. A lot of those were actually boycotted uh, the elections. They didn't want to have anything to do with this because they thought there were no, no real choice there and also nothing much happens in Iran because the reins of power are in the hands of the Iran supreme leader and he cannot be voted out of office. So a lot of people angry with the regime, angry with the hardliners didn't, didn't vote. Mr. Pazishkian is, is a relatively moderate person and during his campaign he promised that he will push for a more moderate policies internally. For example, uh, the issue of women and the suppression of women, repressive policies against women. He was against it he, time and again. He said he's, he's, he doesn't want hard line sort of uh, treatment of women and uh, those people who don't want to wear a compulsory hijab, for example. So a lot of people expect him within the confines of what he can and cannot achieve to push for more moderate policies internally. Externally, we're talking about him pushing for the revival of uh, nuclear talks. As you, you might recall that Iran, uh, until two years ago, was in, uh, in talks with world powers and the U.S. 
to revive the uh, the um, uh, nuclear deal in, uh, that they signed in uh, 2015. Um, uh, that didn't happen, and now Mr. Pazishkian has been saying uh, um, in his campaign that we, Iran cannot expect to progress economically and otherwise if it's under these crippling sanctions because of Iran's nuclear activities. And he was saying that we have to restart negotiations with the U.S. and the world powers so that we can, we can lift these sanctions.